Welcome back to the comment section. I'm Brett Cooper. A new Harry Potter video game is set to be released on February 10th of this year, and it is already causing just a massive stir online because of its obvious connection to JK Rowling, head turf of the world. We literally talked about this in an episode yesterday, which I think is actually coming out today. But I'm going to explain it again. If you don't know, turf is a trans exclusionatory radical feminist, and that is what JK Rowling is. Basically, a turf is just a woman who was like a second wave feminist and believes that women are women and men are men and trans women are not biologically the women and they still support women's rights biological women's rights this is all just like common sense and I can't believe that I'm explaining that this is something controversial but in 2023 it is and people hate JK Rowling for it anyway the gaming community is torn up because this game looks incredible but they don't want to support JK Rowling we already talked about the streamer and the community manager for limited run games who publicly expressed excitement about this game and then angered this random anonymous woke with like 3,000 Twitter followers who then dug up all of her old tweets and found out that she was, oh my God, following right wingers and got her fired from her job at Limited Run simply because she had expressed excitement about this game. People have been anticipating this game. This has been talked about for years now. And they are still losing their damn minds. 12 seconds later. God, that's so cool. Ugh, it's so pretty. Am I going to become a gamer after this? I know that I talk about virtual reality in not the best light and I don't really trust it, but I would kill to play this game with a VR headset on. Just saying. If that's possible, I will be doing that. The choices you make now will define the legacy of Hogwarts. I'm gonna get chills. This is like Pottermore on steroids. Did you guys play Pottermore? I was obsessed. Is it something that you play? I don't know. It was that website and you could do the, you know, the sorting hat quiz and then you sort of, there was some kind of game, but it wasn't really in depth, but it was kind of like a taste of this. Now we're in like the full freaking thing. I'm excited. I don't know. Is this, it is PlayStation. I don't have a PlayStation, but I'll, I'll get one. I'll get one to play this. I'll figure it out. I do not play video games. I have maybe watched three video game trailers in my life, but that looks freaking cool. That is probably the best video game trailer I have seen out of the three that I have watched. All of it looks amazing. I love that they have the flying car in there. It makes me want to go buy a new car, which is why I love that I'm partnered with Carzing. Car buying can be a really stressful experience, especially if you are a young person. You might not have a lot of credit. You don't really know your way around the dealership. Well, Carzing wants to eliminate all of that and make it totally transparent and simple for you. They put the power back in your hands and make sure that you have all the information you need before you step foot onto that lot. First and foremost, they are an online car shopping website that partners with over 25,000 dealerships across the country. They have millions of cars listed to help you find your perfect fit. But on top of that, they also want to make auto financing simple and easy. By partnering with credit agencies, lenders, in addition to those dealerships, they make sure that you can get pre-approved without impacting your credit before you step foot into the dealership. Plus, with their innovative technology and financial tools, you can search for cars with instant financing information like your down payment, APR, term, and monthly payment. So once you find your dream car at your ideal budget, you just take in your Carzing voucher into the dealership and it is all handled for you. Carzing truly offers transparency to the max. It takes the hassle and confusion out of car buying, which is why I love working with them. If you want to get started today, go to carzing.com slash cooper. Again, that is carzing.com slash cooper so that you can find your dream car. I highly doubt they have any Harry Potter flying hover cars cars but you know what it's 2023 we're probably getting close to that being a reality anyway the people on youtube are very very excited about the game like i did not see a single negative comment this trailer has 31 million views it has been up for two years so people have been anticipating this and they are all so excited about it so at first i was like i don't really see the controversy about this game like i know people don't like jk rowling but everybody seems excited like this person said take all the time you guys need don't give in to publishers time constraints this could either be one of the best games of the decade or the biggest disappointment avalanche don't fail us now again because this game has been in the works for so long people are wanting it to be perfect somebody else said I'd honestly forgotten how magical and exciting the Harry Potter universe could make me feel. This looks like everything 12-year-old me could have dreamed of and more. I am so ready for this. Literally my feeling as I watched that trailer. Somebody else said, and now this is officially the most viewed game trailer in the PlayStation channel. Truly impeccable timing. Somebody else said, JK Rowling really created the most beautiful world. Harry Potter will always be one of the best book and film series. Absolutely. I agree. YouTube, you are based. Reddit and Twitter? Not so much. This is from some gaming subreddit. This person said, a friendly reminder from your mod team that this woman is a turf and anyone who pledges to support her monetarily is also a transphobe. That's just aggressive, but you know what? That's 
the libs for you. Somebody replied and said, that hideous creature on the right deserves no money. I started following this sub purely because of this post. Somebody else said, I wasn't going to buy it anyway, but now I cannot buy it in a cool way. Passive activism, my favorite kind. That's just a very classic thing these days, passive activism or like internet activism. People will scream online about these kinds of social justice warrior issues, but then in their day-to-day -day life, they're not actually doing anything. It would be one thing if you were yelling about these issues and you genuinely cared about them and you were genuinely fighting the good fight every day but you see them in their everyday lives and they could not give less of a shit. But online, they are willing to slander people, to cancel people, post all their angry infographics. Like it is all for clout, all of it. You just wanna feel good about yourself. Like this person said, he's saying the quiet part out loud. He wants to feel cool while being an activist. It is like a status symbol these days. Notice me, no. Somebody else said, don't give the CEO of transphobia any more money than she already has, folks. Now it's like a Twitter. Somebody said, sigh, yes, I canceled my Hogwarts legacy purchase, got too caught up in the hype, and then Rowling reminded me again why I just need to stop and close the book on Harry Potter for good. And then it's some um, J.K. Rowling tweet where she said, Mary Turf Miss, which is objectively, I think very funny because she knows what people say about her and she's leaning into it. I appreciate her sense of humor. So ignoring the fact that buying Hogwarts Legacy provides financial gain for JK Rowling, who will use that money to continue her transphobic tirade, let's also acknowledge that the lead designer ran an anti-social justice YouTube channel and the game is wildly anti-Semitic. First of all, <laughs> She's gonna use that money to contribute her transphobic tirade. She literally already has so much money, extra money from this video game. It's really not gonna change much, guys. Like she's gonna do what she's gonna do. She is so rich, you cannot take her down. I'm so sorry to burst your bubble. But also, if the lead designer did actually run an anti-social justice YouTube channel, first of all, I would love to see it. I would love to watch those videos. That just makes me want to buy the game more. Shut up and take my money. Also, how are you saying that the game is wildly anti-Semitic? Where are you getting that from? You've never played the game. Are you just pulling that out of your ass because you want like a third? stamp of like, this is wrong. I'm going to cancel it for this. Is Harry Potter then anti-Semitic? Is it anti-Semitic just because it's connected to JK Rowling, who is transphobic? So then it's like all intersectional. I don't know. If there really is a problem, let me know. But if not, you're just making things up. Somebody else said, people defending Hogwarts legacy claiming they aren't transphobic or enablers, yet their follows and comment section look like a <laughs> clan meeting in regards to trans people. Y'all aren't fooling anyone. Just admit a shitty looking game matters more to you than trans folks. It's not a shitty looking game. That was the most beautiful thing I have ever seen. So sit down. It's not that big of a deal. It's a freaking game. Obviously I'm excited about it and it looks cool, but oh my God, your panties are in a bunch over people buying a video game. It is loosely connected to JK Rowling. Obviously it's more than loosely because it's her franchise, but it isn't like she's sitting there designing the game. Give it up. I regained a little bit of hope because as I continued scrolling on Twitter, I saw more people saying the boycott Hogwarts Legacy is ridiculous than people actually calling for the boycott of Hogwarts Legacy. The same thing when I was Googling like mainstream media articles about it, it was like really, no, there's like a few voices that are very angry about it and then everybody's just bickering, but a lot of people have common sense and they're saying, I really don't care, buy the game, don't buy the game. It's not saying that I'm transphobic for playing the game. I think that there are more people out there that are fine with it than not. And that is a white pill in my opinion. Like somebody said, don't buy Hogwarts Legacy, it's transphobic. Me after pre-ordering the deluxe edition, same. Somebody else said, nobody has any <laughs> business telling other people what games to play. Been seeing <laughs> you if you buy Hogwarts Legacy on Twitter lately. Such a narcissistic thing to try to dictate what other people buy slash play. Buy and play whatever you want. Now I do want to say a lot of these tweets are from like a few days ago in January and some are even from December. Because this game has been anticipated for so long, there might be tweets that I'm missing from um, you know, last year as this was all coming out, especially around times when JK Rowling has been trending for some of her comments, there might've been a more heated debate, but right now as we're getting closer to the release, people seem to be fine with it. So why are these people still wanting to die on this hill that if you do anything related to Harry Potter, you are transphobic? It, it's not, they're not connected that way. I'm so sorry. This girl tried to defend the game and then got slammed with her replies, but her original tweet actually has so much common sense. She said, people need to stop behaving like buying Hogwarts legacy and being anti-trans rights are synonymous with one another. I just want to relive my beloved childhood memories and not everything has to be a huge political or moral statement. 
thank you. I am not saying that everything that comes out in regards to entertainment and media and gaming has to be in line with my political values. I just don't want your political agenda shoved down my throat, just like you don't want my political agenda shoved down your throat. We have moved so far into this divisive, polarized society that we cannot just enjoy a video game, that all of us collectively cannot just enjoy our childhood nostalgia about Harry Potter. God, it's exhausting. Anyway, she did get torn up in the replies, and so she said, <clears throat> Classic apology. I've gained a lot of perspective from this tweet blowing up. I apologize if it came off as disrespectful. I've decided to pirate the game if I decide to play it all, okay? However, the point was, whether I pirate or buy it, my playing a game doesn't mean I relate to J.K. Rowling's opinions on anything. I'm glad that she is still defending herself slightly, even though she is kind of bending a knee, but she still is saying, I don't care. She continued on and she said, I also wasn't aware that she funds anti-trans organizations. All I was trying to say is that you don't become transphobic just by deciding to play a game. And it still strikes me as odd when people accuse others of trans genocide just for wanting to play a game. Did they accuse? I didn't see that comment, but if they're accusing her of trans genocide, then those people have problems. <laughs> Those people need help. But you know what? Like, who cares? Because look at this. When you look up Hogwarts Legacy, release date Hogwarts Legacy, one of the first articles that comes up, Hogwarts Legacy is currently the best selling game on Steam and it is not even out yet. Upcoming open world Harry Potter action RPG Hogwarts Legacy is currently the best selling game on Valve's digital storefront Steam. I mean, the game is still winning. They are actively trying to make everybody feel awful for wanting to play this game, for wanting to relive all of their childhood memories and nostalgia. And you know what? I think that they're pretty outnumbered. Most of those people are from anonymous accounts. They're bitter. They are trying to make everybody else feel bad. They won't even show their face on their damn account. They have no followers and they are just sitting in their rooms being keyboard warriors trying to take all the common sense people down. And you know what? It's not working. So sorry to burst your bubble. So this is actually a big white pill episode because the game looks fantastic. The response of most people right now on Twitter is incredibly positive and I think that that is a great thing. I'm glad that some people at least still value good creativity and solid entertainment over some social justice warrior agenda. It's a good day. Okay, that was fun. And those people are crazy. If you want to see more videos like that, make sure you subscribe to this channel and like that video. And if you want even more content, you can follow me on Instagram at I'm Brett Cooper.